Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you first and foremost to say thank you. Lord, thank you so much for being the God that you are. Lord, I know it seems strange to this world that we're still trusting in you in a what appears to be a crazy, chaotic time as this. But this is the time to particularly and especially trust in you. We may not have all the answers, Lord, but we trust that you have a purpose and a plan. We trust that you are loving and you are all powerful, Lord. So just we believe, but help our unbelief, Lord. We just ask that you be in the midst this morning, uh, a message of the beauty of being new, a message of, to our hearts of the beauty of being a new creature in you. So we just ask that you be in the midst. Um, let this land on good soil that so that we will forever be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, we're going to talk today um, on 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Won't uh, desire not to be before you long. Just a message to encourage our hearts on the beauty of being a new creature, the beauty of being new, the beauty of being a new creature in Christ Jesus. And it's a very familiar passage, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the interesting thing about this is we, we have to be careful to never lose sight that we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. There's a lot that's going on in the world, so we can't lose sight of who we are in Christ Jesus, first and foremost, and that we are new creatures in Christ. So when everybody else is acting like the old, when there's a lot of ugliness going on in our lives or going on in our communities, uh, we have to keep our hope in Christ Jesus, that Christ has made us new creatures in him, and that we can operate in that new creature, we can operate with a newfound hope. Um, I know I remember looking back in 2020 and I was seeing a lot of Facebook posts where people were saying, man, I can't wait till 2020 is over with, right? Like the bad things are just bound in 2020 so that once 2021 comes, everything's gonna start over and everything's gonna be new. Um, we sometimes look to new um, leaders or new political figures or new this or new that. And our true hope, it's okay to hope in those things, but our true ultimate hope is in Christ Jesus, okay? Because for a lot of us, when the year 2021 came, nothing changed. A lot of people are still dying. A lot of people are still looking for means to provide for their families. So it's not that it's a new calendar year, but the true hope is in that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, amen? So we're just gonna talk today about so illustrate some of the beauty of what it means. Well, not what it means, but illustrate some of the beauty of being a new creature in Christ Jesus. And what I want to do is I want to talk to an illustration I used years ago. I gave a few minute uh, devotional some years ago, and I used the illustration of a caterpillar and a butterfly. And I know that might seem strange, but just bear with me. Because when you look at a caterpillar and then you look at this beautiful butterfly, the old creature is the caterpillar. Right. That's the old creature. That's the old man. But this beautiful new creature, it, it's the it's the same uh, 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 instinct, but it went through this transformation process. And now what you see is this beautiful new creature. And there's a beauty in being a new creature in Christ Jesus. OK, now we don't judge other people who are in, not in Christ Jesus. We don't lord it over their heads. But the beauty behind it is here is this God. Here is our creator. He has a son, our Lord and our savior. And we come to put our trust in him. And, and through this faith, he works in us and he works through us. And we are these beautiful new creatures. And again, and, and what I want to illustrate is um, the, the, this caterpillar becoming a butterfly. When you look at a caterpillar, a caterpillar, its appearance is it's just a typical looking insect. Right. It blends in with this environment. It doesn't look like there's anything special about this caterpillar. OK, but when it become goes through this transformation process, you're now looking at a beautiful new creature. You're looking at this creature that as you look at this butterfly, it is hard to imagine that it has come from this caterpillar or it was once this caterpillar. Right. You're now looking at this beautiful butterfly with these beautiful wings and it's it's colorful and all these different things. And people can gaze upon it and just see how beautiful and how colorful it is. Well, that's how it could look or should look when we're in Christ Jesus. 
You have this old man and this old way of operating. But now that you're in Christ Jesus, people should be able to look at us and see a beauty to that. They should be able to look at us and say, man, he has a joy, unspeakable joy. Man, she has a peace that surpasses all understanding. There is something about him. It's something about her and how she walks and how he lives. It's something about that's just beautiful and it is alluring and is appealing. And it makes me want to ask you, where did the change come from in your life? Right. So there, there's a difference there where and, and sometimes as Christians, we have to be careful when we talk about appearance. We have to be careful to not try to make people look like us. You know, there are people who can come from the hip hop culture. They can come from the rock and roll culture or genre. They could come from the uh, country music, the blues, the jazz genre. And there's a certain way they dress and carry themselves. You know, country music, I imagine the blue jeans and the flannel shirts and the cowboy hats and all these other different things, uh, whatever they come from. But when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, it doesn't mean that that has to always change. You can still operate in the culture of that context. But there's going to be you will bear like the fruits of the spirit. And there will be something beautiful about that. There should be this joy to you. There should be this peace to you. It don't mean that it will always be easy, but there's a beauty in what God has done in your life when you used to be this old, ugly looking caterpillar, but now you are this beautiful looking butterfly, right? And, and something else I want to point out that you ever notice when, when people see this beautiful butterfly, I don't see that many people that spend that much time uh, speaking about the butterfly's past. Right. Most people will see a butterfly and they'll say they'll point and look and that's a beautiful butterfly. And if I was to say, man, look at that beautiful butterfly. I don't hear too many people complaining about the past of that butterfly. I don't hear too many people trying to bring that butterfly down and say, you know what? I know you're looking at this butterfly, but I knew it when it was this old, ugly caterpillar. Child, you don't know what I know about this butterfly. That would seem silly, wouldn't it? Well, that's how silly we look. When we keep trying to bring up the old man when God has already done a work in somebody and they're now operating out of a new creature. Right. And that's something that we need to encourage ourselves on is don't look at yourself in light of your old man. Look at yourself in light of how God has done this beautiful, transformative work in you. And now you are this beautiful new creature. And I want to stay here for a little bit because you will be amazed at how many men and women of God has an ugly past. Yes, I don't know what you've gone through. Yes, I don't know everything you've done. Yes, you may have done this. Yes, you may have done that. But that's the old you. The new you is what's beautiful. The new you. God has done this beautiful work in you. Now look at the peace you have. Now look at the power that you have. Now look at the love that you have. Look at the spiritual gifts and the blessings that you have and that you're walking into. So we have to be careful trying to hold people back to that old man. When you're speaking about another man or woman of God, you got to be careful, always trying to bring that person down, holding them to the old person. That's how silly you look. You look as silly as someone who's constantly complaining about the origin of a beautiful butterfly. So let that resonate with you. I hope that encourages your heart there. So one of the things that's difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly is the appearance. Another beautiful thing uh, uh, about being a new creature in Christ. And again, I want to focus on this illustration between this transformative work done in a caterpillar versus a butterfly. One of the things that's beautiful now is the location. When you look at the location of a caterpillar, the old man, that old creature, where did it, where was it located? It used to burrow in the gallows. It used to mine through leaves and eat through leaves. Its location was confound to being uh, in rolled up leaves for protection. A lot of caterpillars will also even dwell amongst the ants for protection, right? So that's the location of the old man, of the old creature. But look at the location of the new creature. Look at the location of the butterfly. It is no longer bound to being living in a rolled up leaf. It is no longer bound living amongst the ants. It is now, its location now is to fly amongst the giants. Right. Not living amongst the ants anymore for protection, but flying amongst the giants. Think of the beautiful experience it has now and the beautiful perspective it now gets on life because it's operating as this new creature. And as this new creature, it is able to fly around and see this world from a whole new perspective. Right. A perspective it would not have gotten 
as the old creature, as the old caterpillar. A caterpillar can only move so fast, go from this point to that point and crawl very slowly, but the butterfly can get there much quicker now flying around. And that's something I just want to speak to your heart on this morning, that when you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, your location changes. Just like the butterfly, you can now see life in a new perspective. You have a new perspective now to your trials and your troubles. You have a new perspective now that when things come into your life, God will work it out for your good. You can now be aware and have a new perspective of the spiritual things that's happening in your midst that you were once blinded to. Right. The Bible talks about that. The natural man can't receive the things of God. It's foolishness. He cannot discern them and their foolishness to him. Right. But the spiritual man, we can receive these things. So God is doing a work in our lives. God is working in the midst of and around us and is trying to work on us. And now as this new creature, we have a beautiful new perspective of that. We have a beautiful new perspective of life. Right. Now, something I want I want to dwell on here just for a little bit is imagine how silly it would look for a butterfly to try to go back to its old location. Right. Its old location as a caterpillar was to live amongst the ants. Its old location as a caterpillar was it would even dwell or excuse me, it would blend into its old environment. Right. For protection, it blended in. But this beautiful new cat, this beautiful new butterfly, if it tried to live amongst the ants, how silly you think it would look. If it tried to go back to its old environment, y'all, it would not blend in any well. Why? Because it is not this green caterpillar anymore. It has purple wings. It has yellow wings. It has blue wings. It has pink wings. I mean, just beautiful, bright colored wings. It does not blend in with its old location anymore. And if it tried to go back to its old location and dwell because that's its comfort zones, think about how vulnerable it would look. It will be a target to a lot of its predators because it doesn't blend in anymore. Right. But that I, I suggest to you today, that's what a lot of us are doing. We have this location that where we used to go and who we used to hang with when we was that old man. But God has done this beautiful, transformative work in you. Now you this new creature in Christ. And that word doesn't say some things. No, behold, all things are made new. Right. So sometimes you can't go where you used to go. You don't blend in anymore. Your old man blended in, but that new creature does not blend in and you'll be vulnerable to some attacks. Some spirit. And this is where a lot of Christians talk about spiritual warfare and so on and so forth. Right. Some of the, 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 the people that the caterpillar used to dwell with, it used to dwell amongst the ants. But now the butterfly is suppo supposed to be flying amongst the giants. So there's some people you used to dwell with. You just may not be able to dwell with anymore. That was the season for the old you. But God has a beautiful new season and a beautiful new location for the new you. Amen. So I just hope that speaks to your heart there. Right. And, and, and again, you just got to be careful trying to go back to that old location there and the dangers and the threats you can leave yourself vulnerable to. Another thing that was pressed on my heart in illustration, this difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly to just help us um, grasp a little bit the beauty of this new creation is the diet. The diet of the caterpillar was the, and the old man, the old creature, the caterpillar was a particular diet. The butterfly now has a new diet. Well, what was the diet of the caterpillar? The caterpillar could eat other plants. It would eat plants. And sometimes those plants would be toxic. So they could ingest other toxins, right? The caterpillar also could resemble the different plants that it could eat. I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, now I'm gonna pause a little bit. I'm not claiming to be an expert and a caterpillar, I'm not claiming to be an expert in a butterfly. I just did a, a little bit of research there and, and found these different things. I even found that there's certain species of caterpillars that can even be um, cannibals. They would eat their own kind, right? So the diet of this old creature, it would eat its own kind. It would just eat plants that were toxic and they can resemble what it is they eat, okay? But what's the diet now of this beautiful new creature? I found this to be interesting. It would eat the sweet nectar from beautiful flowers. That just amazes me. Now imagine 
how silly it would look for the butterfly to try to go back and eat its old diet. Well, you know, I'm just comfortable with it. That's where I come from. I still have a craving for it. I still have an ap appetite for it. Imagine how silly it would look for the butterfly to go back to its old toxic diet, to go back to eating its own kind. Because I suggest to you today that as our old creatures, we ate our own kind. We cut each other down. We devoured each other's reputation. We ate and injected toxic things. You know, I got news for you. Just how the uh, caterpillar would resemble what it eat. If we're really honest with ourselves, we resemble the different things we were gorging ourselves in as the old man. Okay, so I'm not condemning uh, um, about to sit here and go down the list of certain mu movies you should or shouldn't watch, certain music you should and shouldn't listen to, certain reality shows or TV shows you should or shouldn't watch. But I will say this, if you pay attention to what's going on in this world, it is clear, it is evident that people are resembling the different things that they are taking in because it's feeding something. You are letting this uh, culture, the movie, the social media and all these different things and these different narratives from the world, we are letting it feed and, and, and feed and inform us and re resemble it. So the way we treat women is, re is a resemblance of what we're taking in. The way we treat one another in, in anger and in disputes, we resemble what we're taking in. Right. That's what the caterpillar did. It resembled what it took in. But that beautiful butterfly doesn't seem to change its resemblance. Based on the different things. Well, what am I saying? You know, the, the caterpillar had sweet nectar that it would eat. You know, there's a word. There's a there's a verse in the Bible that talks about the word of God or the scrolls when he ate it and digested it. It was sweet as honey. See, our new diet now is the bread of life. Our new diet now is the living water. We drink from a well which never runs dry. Our new diet now is the meat that comes from the word of God, right? Our new diet now is this, this word that is going down like sweet honey. And I know those who know the word well says, well, wait a minute, going down, it was like sweet honey, but when it got in his stomach, it was bitter. Well, remember the word is sharper than any two edged sword. So it's sweet to us, but at the same time, it's going to stab away at your pride. It's going to cut away at your ego and your self-righteousness. Okay. So we have a new diet now and our new diet. Now, uh, we should no longer keep resembling the different things that the world has to offer, just like the caterpillar in its old diet, right? We now, just like the butterfly, it, it, it eats the sweet nectar from a beautiful flower. We have a sweet diet now that the Lord will supply eating on the word of God, uh, letting worship change and form us, letting our knowledge of the word of God change and form us. And I just want to say here, I'm not speaking about conforming people to a organized, westernized, organized religion. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there is a God. He does have a son. He died on the cross for our sins. And I'm talking about getting back to knowing this God, getting back to knowing our Lord and our Savior. And as he has given us his word out of his love, that we can better get to know him through that word. So our diet now is different. And you have to be careful going back to that old diet. You would look as silly as a butterfly looks trying to go back and eat old uh, caterpillars, trying to go back and eat its old plants that had toxins. Why go back and eat something toxic when you are now have the diet of eating sweet nectar? from a beautiful flower. And I'm staying here for a little bit because, and it's not to be judgmental, it's not to cut, condemn people or make people feel bad, but you would be amazed at how many of us, even though we're in Christ, we keep going back to the enemy's camp, sitting at the enemy's table, eating the enemy's food. Why would I go back to an enemy and I know his agenda for me is to kill, steal, and destroy? I understand the old man was eating that. And that's what you're still craving. That's what you might still have an appetite for. But another thing that I found interesting about the caterpillar is it was voracious. It was known for gorging. It would eat heavily. As I read about the, the caterpillar, it seemed to lack restraint in its eating. But you don't get that really with the butterfly. But now, so that what that means for us is in that old man, we gorged ourselves in things. But now in the new man, in this new creature, in Christ Jesus, we should have more restraint. We should have more discipline. 
Okay. The word of God says that when someone returns to their sin, they're like a dog that returns to its vomit. And that is just a ugly, vile illustration. I gave that testimony before where I was speaking to a neighbor years ago in another neighborhood. And I was talking to the neighbor and the, do the dog, I mean, it was a pile of vomit and it was nasty. And by the time I finished talking to the neighbor, it was gone. That was one of the most vile things I had ever seen. And I'm sitting here talking to my neighbor and I'm just like, you just going to let the dog do this? Like, but they just did. And, and one of the things I'm grateful for is I'm glad I was able to witness it because the word says, Nathaniel, if you return back to that old diet, if you return back to that sin, that's what you look like. So we need to stop trying to go back to that old location. We need to stop trying to go back to that old diet and focus on the beauty of this new diet that God has given us. Amen. So one of the last thoughts I want to leave you with, and like I said, I didn't want to stand before you long. I just wanted to encourage your hearts um, to, to remind us of the beauty of being a new creature in Christ Jesus. One of the last thoughts I want to leave you with is the security that there is in being a new creature in Christ Jesus, right? What do you mean, uh, Reverend, about this security? Well, notice that, well, first of all, before we even get to that, you know what? Let's just end with Christ, right? We start with Christ, let's end with Christ because everything is focused around Christ. Whenever you talk about peace, Christ is in there. You talk about salvation, it deals with Christ. You talk about the end times and the judgment, we're dealing with Christ, right? There's even a verse where you hear about God and the Father a lot, as far as creation, but when you even start to get into Colossians about creation, what do we do? We get right back to Christ. So yes, there's this beauty of being a new creature, but we're not just talking about randomly being a new creature. We're talking about if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So we got to remind ourselves, this is dealing with Christ, that in Christ. So you know what? I know that some of us, we've been in Christ for 50 years, 60 years, five years, five days. No matter how long you've been in Christ, don't become stagnant and allow yourself to become uh, stale in, in being in Christ. Every day, recognize the beauty of what it means to be in Christ. You can encounter to this world in a beautiful new perspective because you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. So we need to humble ourselves for those of us who are new in Christ and those of us who, who are operating in these newfound abilities and these new, the new power that's found in the Holy Spirit. And we need to give God the glory because the interesting thing that I found about the caterpillar is it cannot decide if it goes through this transformation process or not. The only thing it can choose is its location, right? The transformation process is out of its hand. Right. It's going to become a butterfly. The beauty I love about that is in Christ Jesus. Listen, we need to we need to really glorify Christ because I know from our perspective, we came to the Lord. I know from our perspective, we did this and we did that. But it was really the Lord that bid you to come. Right. No one comes to the father unless someone he bids him. Right. God has given us this faith as a gift. So we really need to keep glorifying the Lord for this experience that we're in as a new creature. Right. And I know that could be a struggle for people, but but when we're a new creature in Christ, when you're in Christ, you got to recognize that the old man was dead in sin. But this new creature, it is spiritually alive in Christ Jesus now. You know, I used this illustration before uh, with Lazarus. You ever notice that when Jesus told uh, Lazarus to arise from the dead, Lazarus had no control in waking up from the dead. The Lord spoke. He was going to rise from the dead. See, God has spoken a word to our spirit man saying, wake up. And, and, and you could not stop that spirit man from wake up. God had put you, orchestrated things in your life. He orchestrated people in your life to keep planting the seed and watering the seed. And then the season come where Lord said, spirit man, spirit woman, wake up. So I'm staying here for a little bit because I want some of us to be more humble and to really glorify God more. Because if we do that in our transformation process, when we recognize it, then we can be more understanding to other people who are still operating out of that old man. And instead of condemning them, we should encourage them. We should recognize that, look, this is what I once was. I was once a caterpillar, but it was the Lord being in Christ Jesus what transformed me into a new creature. OK, so I just wanted to get into that before I, I end there. And, and so let me get back to this security. 
in the new creature. So what do I mean about the security and being a new creature? You ever notice a butterfly can never undo its transformation? The butterfly that once it's gone through this transformation process, it can never go back to being a caterpillar. Okay. Now, the challenging thing is it may, out of a, a freak of nature, what people may say, it may decide to live like a caterpillar, but it can never go back to being a caterpillar. And that's one of the things I want to encourage you on today. I, I respect other pastors and preachers. They have different interpretations of scripture and in and, and reading some of these scriptures, I understand where they may come there. I just don't agree with it. I don't agree with losing salvation. I do believe as I go through the text, as I go through the Greek, and as I understand the culture and the context of these different verses, I do believe what happens is oftentimes there are people who may have thought they were saved. But when they stood before the Lord, what does the Lord say? He doesn't say, um, uh, depart from me. I once knew you and now I don't know you anymore. No, he says, I never knew you. Right. When you look at the illustrations of the seeds and the sower, there was even one of them who it appeared to be that they received it, but they didn't. Why? Because it wasn't on good soil. They heard the word of God. They got emotional. They got excited. From our perspective, it seemed like they were saved, but then the cares of the world choked it out. And the Lord tells us the issue wasn't that they were saved. The issue was it just didn't get on good soil. So I don't want to stay there too long because I'm not using this as a means to debate and, and to contend the whole eternal. But I want to say, I believe that the word of God is teaching us that there is a security in salvation. So I say that to say this, there is a security in being a new creature. Even if you act like the old creature, you're still this beautiful new creature in Christ Jesus. You might have slipped up and made some mistakes as the old man. You might have went back to that old diet. You might have went back to that old location, but you can never undo that transformation process. Now, again, what I, what I want to suggest to you today is if you look at a butterfly, it cannot ever go back to being a caterpillar. But imagine if it tried to live its rest of its days after its transformation like a caterpillar. Imagine what it would be missing out on. Imagine the beautiful, sweet diet it's missing out on. Imagine the location. Instead of dwelling amongst the ants, it could have been flying amongst giants. Because from its perspective, we're giants to it. Right. Imagine the new perspective it could have had on life, but it missed out on it. Why? Because it tried to continue to live like a caterpillar. And I want to encourage you today, not condemn you, not judge you. But my concern and care for a lot of us isn't that, oh, man, you, you've become back the old man. My care and concern is that, listen, I don't want you to get and stand before the Lord and realize then the beautiful life you could have lived. The beautiful life that you have been missing out on. Why? Because here you are, this beautiful new creature in Christ Jesus, but you keep trying to live like the old man. I'm not being self-righteous. I'm not condemning you. I'm not condoning things. I'm just encouraging you on today that there is a beauty to being a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you can't undo that transformation. So don't get so concerned about, well, Reverend, you just don't know the mistakes I made. You just don't know what I've done. He doesn't love me anymore. I'm not in him anymore. I don't feel him. Listen, I understand. We've all sinned. We've all been there. God is willing to forgive you. You are, if just repent of your sins. Just repent. And God is able to forgive you and receive you into his arms. You're already still in him. I'm not trying to cause people to be complacent in that old creature. I just don't want you to miss out on the beauty of living as a new creature in Christ Jesus. So I wanted to suggest that to you today. I want to encourage our hearts on today. And I want us to understand something, too. Because I hear this sometimes, and again, I'm not being judgmental. I just disagree with people. Oftentimes, I hear people talk about the good old days. You hear some people talk about the good old days, and they're referencing what they used to do when they was in that old man or that old woman. I used to run around, and I used to do this, and I used to do that, and I used to have so much sensual pleasures and all this other stuff. Listen, that's not the good old days. The good days it was lies ahead as the beautiful new creature in Christ Jesus. It's not what you used to do as the old man. It's what God has in store for you as that new man, as that new woman in Christ Jesus. So I want this to encourage your heart. And even for those of us who are more seasoned, that's been in the Lord for, uh, for many years. I don't want us to get complacent 
that I got it all figured out. There's still beautiful experiences awaiting you. You might be 70 years old, 80, 90 years old, 60 years old. You might have been in the Lord for a long time, but don't become complacent. There's still beautiful new experiences and perspectives waiting your horizons. And again, I want to end with this. If any man be in Christ, not on his own, not reading these self-help books, and I'm not condemning those things. But as a Christian, we get mocked. We get talked about because our transformation is due to our trust in the Lord and other people can experience what they perceive to be a transformation on their own. And they, they consider the religion and believing in God as a crutch. Y'all just need something to believe in. We can do this on our own. Listen, if you want to do it on your own, that's your choice. You choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The difference is that when you stand before the Lord, you're going to have to tell him, oops, I didn't know you existed and I lived this life without you. I transform to this new being without you. You know, I, I come from this home and I, I had this abusive parent or this or that. And I had anger issues, but I, you know, I didn't believe in God and I read self-help books and I became a better person. But God, I became a better person without you. You know, and if they want to talk about us, then fine. But when we stand before the Lord, our testimony is going to be, Lord, we trusted in you. Even when the world talked about us, we trusted in you. To give us a to make us a new creature we trusted in you as to be a suitable husband and as to be what it means to be a father and what it means i didn't just go to the world i went to your word i trusted in you i prayed to you for strength as a minister of the gospel i prayed to you for strength on my job i prayed to you and trusted you lord for the different things in my life i put my trust in you and it begins in christ and it has to end in christ jesus let's not condemn people who don't share our beliefs let us not cut down people who don't believe in Christ Jesus. Let's love them. Let's respect them. But when we have an opportunity, let's let our appearance be like the butterfly. Beautiful that people can look upon and be like, man, mighty are the works of the hands of the Lord. We have a new location now. We can see the world from a beautiful new perspective, a beautiful new experience. We have a new diet now. The bread of life, the living water, uh, the meat from the word of God. We drink from a well which never runs dry. The word of God is like honey going down. Amen. So I pray that we are encouraged in this new year. My hope personally is not in the year 2021. I don't mean to burst people bubble or hate people, uh, hurt people's feelings, but I know a lot of people just couldn't wait till 2021 because this was all going to end. Listen, if we're not careful, we can bring the same craziness from 2020 into 2021. My hope is not in the change of a calendar date. My hope is in Christ Jesus. We can pray for leaders and government and all these other things, but history has taught us, our own testimonies have taught us that people are flawed. Not, they're not just flawed, we're flawed too. So as much as I pray for them and I can have a degree of hope for them, my true hope is in Christ Jesus. So I want us to move into throughout the rest of this year in 2021 with the beautiful mindset, with the with this understanding that there's a beauty to being a new creature in Christ Jesus. I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope this was an encouragement to you. Uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, to say thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity to hear your word virtually. Thank you for this opportunity, Heavenly Father, um, to praise you, Lord. Uh, there are people in this world and country that they can be arrested or even put to death for believing in you and believing in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, there's a lot going on in our world right now. There's a lot going on in society. There's a not lot going on in community. But whatever it is that we have to face. If we face things in government, if we face things in politics, if we face things in our health, if we face things in our job, in our financial situation or in the community, whatever it is we face, let us remember the beauty of what it means to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. And let us face these things and face these challenges, not as the old man, but as the new man and the new woman that is now in Christ Jesus. Give us the strength. Give us the power. Bless us throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.